All right, so to get started, first thing first, we're gonna install clock code onto our local machine. So we're gonna copy this command here for npm, make sure to have Node.js 18 and above installed. And here we're just gonna run this on our terminal. So once we have this installed, we're just gonna navigate to our project and start using Claude from there. Okay, so back to terminal. Now we can just type in Claude since I have already CD into a project. And here I can set up our terminal style for a text. And I'm just gonna stick with the dark mode for simplicity. And then here we are prompted to select a login method. So I'm just gonna choose the Claude code account with the subscription, which is only 20 bucks per month for the pro plan. So I'm gonna use that for this demonstration. Once we authenticate ourselves, then we can start to set up our terminal setups. So here we're just gonna say yes for the use recommended settings for Claude code. Now we can be able to grant access for Claude code to read files inside of this folder. So we're gonna say yes to proceed. And now you can see that we can start to use Claude code officially in our terminal for this project. Now we can also use Claude code inside of our Visual Studio code with cursor. So here inside of my Visual Studio code, I'm just gonna open a terminal. And here I can be able to do Claude. And now we can be able to start to use Claw code inside of our VS code here. And to get started, first thing first, we're gonna press enter to continue. And then because this is a new code base, we also need to use Claw to initialize this project. So in this case, we're gonna use the slash init command, and this will basically initialize the code base by having Claw to read through every files inside of our project. So let's try to initialize our project using this command. And what's really cool about this is that it starts to list out the tasks that they're gonna do. First thing first, it's gonna explore the project structure, the readme file, analyze the main applications, the architecture, and then start to create the claw.md file. All right, so now you can see that it has made some progress for this to-do list. And right now it's asking us permission to edit our claw.md. And in that case, I'm just gonna say yes. Okay, so now you can see that we have our claw.md file generated. And pretty much every time when we open a new chat session with claw code, it uses this file as kind of like a system message or the instructions or memory about this code base. You can see that these are some core important things about our code base. So our essential commands, our database, our architecture, our tech stacks, also things about our database schema, our authentication, app structure, state management, uh, there's a lot of details going on here. It's a full stack application. It pretty much lists out everything that AI needs to know about this project. So pretty much whenever we start a new conversation, it will feed this .md file into the large language model to be able to have context about what this project is about. All right, so now let's start using Claude code inside of our terminal. So the first command we're gonna use is slash model, which we can be able to view which AI model we're using for our Claude code. And here you can see I'm only using the Sonnet 4 because I am using the pro plan but if you're using the max plan or different plans, you can actually change different models here. All right, so the next basic thing we're gonna talk about is the files referencing. So how do we reference file instead of our claw code? So what I can do here, if let's say if I wanna reference the readme file, I can just drag it here and it will basically just paste the file path to the chat so that we can be able to reference this file inside of claw code. And if we don't wanna do this, we can also do the other way where we can be able to do at, and we can also use at symbol here to reference files much more easier. For example, I can also reference a file for source and I can also reference file inside of that directory as well. For example, slash lib folder slash schema and I can be able to reference different files here. But then you might be asking, what if I take a screenshot for something and I wanna use that image inside of a claw code? So if I were to take a picture of this thing right here and I can just drag it here and you can see it basically paste the path for the screenshot and I can ask what is this and then here I'm just gonna grant access to let it read this file and then it's gonna read the screenshot and tell you exactly what this is and it also works if you copy an image so if I were to copy this image in my clipboard and instead of using command V on Mac I'm just gonna use control V and this will basically paste the image from my clipboard onto this chat input so here I'm just gonna say what this is and here I'm gonna ask Claude and you can see that Claude gives you the answer, which is the Claude logo. Now you can also select the code, use that as a context when you interact with Claude code. So for example, if I were to select this line right here and I want Claude code to explain what this command does, then here you can see I have one line selected. So I'm just gonna ask, what does this mean in package? JSON. And Claw code knows exactly what we select. And then here you can see it give us an explanation on what each of those commands does for the code that we select. Now to access Claw code, of course we can actually do this in a terminal, but the other way we can do this, which is using command escape. So if we were to do this, it will automatically start a Claw code session inside of our code editor. 
And now without having us to type in Claude, it will basically start our clock host session inside of our editor. So all we have to do, just use a shortcut, which is the command escape, or we can click on this icon here for Claude. And this will basically start multiple clock host sessions inside of our co-editor. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about, which is the custom commands inside of a clock code. So if I were to do slash here, you can see that these are all the commands that we can use, but we can actually create our own custom commands here based on our development process. For example, let's say if I want clock code to write unit tests for us for our React components, instead of just saving the prompt, you're reusing that the same prompt every single time, we can actually put that prompt into a .md file and then we can let clock code to use that command that we create and be able to instruct it to create that unit test every single time. So for example, I'm just gonna first let clock code here to create a custom command for us and this command is gonna help us to create our unit test for our React components. So here's the basically the prompt. Basically, I want the clock code to create a custom command to create our React component unit tests. And this unit test should be able to cover the happy path, the edge case, the air handlings, and etc. So we're gonna uh, enter this and let clock code to create the custom commands for us so that we can be able to reuse it instead of our project. So here you can see, start to list out the to-dos. And first is gonna examine the dot cloud slash command structure to see what are the commands that we have. And then we're going to analyze the project setup for the testings and the patterns. So it's gonna searching for the patterns and reading through the test file that we have inside of our project to see how we write tests, right? And then it's going to searching for the config file for the jest and also looking for the package to see if we have the right package installed on our project. And the last step is basically creating the custom command. So here you can see it has created this and this is basically the title for this command. And now you can see these are the instructions on what are the things that we need to worry about when creating our tests. And then here at the bottom, you can see that we also have the arguments. So that's gonna be our file reference, our selected code, anything that we want to write our unit test for, then we're gonna pass it here, right? So that's gonna be the arguments. So now if we were to save this, inside of that folder, we have our command here. So now if I were to select a code, for example, this loading components in our React project, now what we can do is we can be able to reference this. So if I were to do slash, you can see that we have our command. And this is gonna be the same title that we put for our uh, .md file here. So we can use this command here and reference the file. So that's gonna be the file reference on where that file is located. Uh, I want basically one claw here to write this unit test for this component. So if I were to run this, so right now you can see it starts reading this component right here and it starts to look for the package.json, the jest setup. Now it starts to create a comprehensive test suite for loading components, which is pretty cool. All right, so now you can see that it creates the test and I can drag it here to full screen. All right, so let's try to take a look at this test. So you can see that it first loads up the components, right? It uses the React testing library here to test the uh, React components. So here you can see we have our happy path, and then there's also some edge cases, which is very detailed. And then there's also component structure test. And it also checks for accessibility, which is also pretty cool as well. So let me just try to save this. And now you can see that it saves the test inside of our test folder. So now what we can do is we can be able to run the test. Now you can see that's what exactly asking us to do, is to run the test to verify the changes. So let's run this and see what happens. All right, so now you can see it started to run the test. And here you can see if we were to scroll down, it started to run into error because it found that the JS configuration is not handled for TypeScript and JSX. So it started to create that JS.configuration file here. And then we can see that once the file is created, it started to rerun the test again. And here you can see that it found another issue, which we can see that the JS environment JS DOM is missing. So it's going to install this package and rerun the test again without having us to do anything. And then here you can see it found another issue for the React handle the white space incorrectly. So it's gonna fix it by itself. And now you can see it runs the test again. And here you can see we have all the tests are now passing. And then at the bottom here, it gives you a summary for each test. And I also have verified this change myself. So if I were to run npm run test in my terminal, and you can see that all the tests has passed. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is multi-agents. So we can have multiple concurrent coding agents running to perform a task. So here you can see I have created another custom command called UI design variations. And if you were to look at this, you can see that it basically tried to generate different types of variations for the UI design. So I basically provide a React component. It's gonna generate multiple different versions for this component. But most importantly, I tell it to use concurrent current task agents to run for parallel generations for all variations here. So we have multiple sub agents concurrently running for a task. So here inside of claw code, I'm just gonna use this custom command 
And here we're just gonna use the UI design variations. And here I'm just gonna find a component. So back to the project here, I just wanna show you quickly that this is a simple dating application where users can be able to find their ideal match through this platform using the match features, the like features, the filter features, and they can also message the people, which is a really simple dating application. And if you're curious on how I build this application, you can check out this video right here where I've made a full video on my YouTube channel on how to build a dating app like this. But enough said, let's take a look at how we can be able to redesign this nav bar right here. So back to clock code, we're just gonna specify the location. In this case, the component itself is from the nav bar and there is a component called top nav bar here. So here I'm just gonna reference the file here and let's run this and see how this is gonna work. All right, so first it's gonna read this file, then it starts to create a to-do list, then it starts to launch the multitask agent concurrently to generate the designs. All right, so now you can see that it has created all five designs and each design has a name. So we have glass, corporate, compact, outline, gradient, which is pretty cool. So here you can see it asks us permissions to write the file. So I'm just gonna say yes to this. And then here is going to write each of those files inside of our navbar folder. So here you can see inside of navbar, we have our five navbars here, right? So now what we can do is we can be able to change the place where we use the original navbar to the new navbar that we created. So in that case, let me go to top nav here and let's find where it uses this. So it's being used in the layout.tsx. So inside of our layout.tsx, what we can do is we can be able to select the file. So in that case, the top navglass.tsx and here I'm just going to change the source from top nav to top nav glass. All right, so now you can see if I were to come back to the web app, this is what it looks like. So we can be able to change two different tabs here, which this is what it looks like. And here, let's try the compact version for this. So if I were to refresh, okay, so this is the compact version. So let's try with another one, which is the gradient version. So if I were to save this and now you can see this is the gradient version. But basically you can see that we can use sub agents here to run tasks concurrently inside of our clock code to achieve what we want to build. And by the end of this, we could just choose whatever version we like and stick to that. And before moving forward, one thing that I always want to stress about is to make sure to use version control to save the versions that you have. Now inside of my git control, you can see that for each versions that it generates, I basically commit those changes one by one, making sure that I put detailed commits for each changes that clock code made. And if I satisfy with the version, I will basically add it on to the branch tree. All right, so now you can see I have committed those changes and let's move on to the next one. All right, the last one we're gonna talk about in this video is gonna be the YOLO mode. So whenever we try to execute something, we often get like ask for permissions for editing things. If you wanna use the YOLO mode instead, which means that it will not ask permissions every time when you try to edit the files. In that case, what we can do is if I were to stop the clock code session and I can simply just do Claude dangerously skip permissions. And by having this running, it will bypass permission mode so that it will not ask us for for approval before committing things. And that's why the last tip that I gave you, which is the doing version control, which is so important because every time when claw code make a change, let's say if it's doing something that's not what it's supposed to do, then we can always revert back to previous working version and be able to continue our claw code session from there. Always to make sure using version control whenever you're dealing with claw code here. So for this part, if you want to use bypass permission mode, you're just going to do yes, accept. And now if I were to ask anything, and now you can see that here at the bottom, it says bypassing permissions. So every time when I try to ask clock code to do something, it's not going to ask us for permissions again. All right, so that's pretty much how we can get started with clock code and some tips that I use for using clock code. So if you found value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.